Hey, this is David with Redline Rebuild, and today I'm giving you a kind of an update that's like, well, after the fact. So what we have here is our 1946 Ford pickup truck that we assembled at the Hershey Swap Meet back in 2015. Four days, four people, drove it home, drove it out to SEMA after that. So this is its glory. Now, one of the things we've wished ever since we started that project in driving across country was the three-speed transmission really labored at least trying to go 55 65 miles an hour with the flathead so one of the things we had on our wish list was a t5 swap so we put in a t5 transmission out of an s10 pickup truck and this thing is glorious now but what you really want to see is how it's done all right now if you're looking for a 100 percent diy video on exactly how to walk through step by step and how to do your T5 swap, this may or may not be what you're looking for. But I will highlight some of the things that we ran into and what we had to do to get our T5 into this pickup truck. So roll the tape. All right, so this, the T5 transmission is used in a ton of different vehicles. Um, specifically the Mustang, the uh, S10s, and the Camaros. You have a version with a mechanical speedometer and you have a version with a electric speedometer. You have two different input shafts as far as the size of your um, friction disc that comes onto the spline for the input shaft. And then you also have the position relative to the shifter. Now that shifter would be positioned, call it forward or way in the back. Relative to the pickup truck that we're putting it in, it makes sense to have the one that's positioned forward. This transmission is about three inches longer in, a, in the shifter position, longer than the original. So it just fits, but it will work. Keep in mind, this is a truck we built in four days at the Hershey Swap Meet on the parking lot grounds. So as we go through some things, you're gonna see a couple things that were made literally on the fly. Given that this truck was going to run across country and we did not utilize a mechanical fuel pump, we put in two electrical pumps, one as a backup. And so as you go through and you look at your vehicle, you know, you're obviously gonna have different things underneath it based on whatever life it has lived. Uh, whether that's 100% stock or something different than that like we have. Uh, so as I go through this, I need to reroute some wires. I'm gonna reroute the fuel line. This particular brake line uh, will also have to get rerouted. And of course, our fuel pumps will have to move a little bit because I have to put in that other cross member to hold the back end of this transmission uh, because the new mount will be somewhere back in here. And then of course, to fit the transmission in here at all, I'm gonna to have to cut the, the factory cross member completely out in the center. Uh, it will not be reused. I believe our extraordinary exhaust system will be fine um, and not in the way. So uh, that's the basic hurdles that we're going to have to jump over. And uh, we're going to get started by getting this drive shaft out of here and just kind of start taking out some of the peripherals around the uh, transmission so we can get that out of there. So I guess it's time to get to work. Okay, so here's your rockauto.com tip of the day. When you're removing this transmission, or any transmission, drain it first. Now, do you have to? Absolutely not. But I tell you what, it'll save you time cleaning up that enormous mess all over the floor, but you don't.
Look at that beaut. Whoa. That worked real good now, did it? At this point in our project, we have uh, everything kind of stripped out of the way with exception of our cross member. And uh, of course, to be able to get that transmission out. And you can see I have access here to the top. So the shifter is now out of the way. So now I can bring that transmission in and out. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use a sawzall, come through and slice, come here and slice, pull the transmission out and down. But to do that, I, I do need to hold my engine into place. So there's only front mounts. If I were to take the transmission out with this mount here, it'll just go bonk until it hits the back end of the firewall. Now, what I'm going to do to help hold that is I'm gonna place this wedge between the head and the firewall. I'm going to lift the transmission or the whole, I'm gonna lift the whole assembly up a little bit teeter about the front mounts, but that's going to give me the ability to kind of preload that and lift this up a little bit, um, opposed to just whacking this into place. I'm also going to probably have my, I have a stand that I can, a uh, tranny stand I can set right here that'll help hold this up as well, but with that fixed in place, then I can't raise and lower the vehicle, so if I need to get it off the hoist for some other means, then I'm kind of stuck. Um, again, like we talked about at the beginning, not every transmission swap is going to require you to change the um, cross member um, in, in this fashion. And these are riveted in, so yeah, you could come in here and bust the rivets out, make it bolt in, bolt out, so on and so forth, but it's that other transmission is still going to sit down here relative to this member. So in our case, we're going to leave the ends on, like I mentioned, and just cut the center out of the way. If you were doing like a swap and say a, a muscle car, as a, for instance, and specifically a Chevelle, because I'm familiar with those, all you would end up doing is swapping out the transmission and then s literally sliding the bolt-in cross member back further in the vehicle and then attaching it uh, with new holes or the existing ones, because there's multiple holes in those frame rails. Uh, so again, every, every project's going to be a little different. The idea is to understand the concept of what it, what it requires to hold the transmission, hold the engine, and all your shift linkage and, and so on and so forth. So that is where we're at. Stayed there. Working with that and falling on my head. There's our massive three speed. So, what we have now is this is our three speed transmission. You can see it's nice and compact, of course, because there's only three gears, uh, including re our plus reverse. We are going to reuse the clutch fork, the stock clutch fork, and the cross rod. We have a fresh um, uh, throwout bearing and a fresh spring to return that and then there's a sleeve and some things so but this gives you an idea of what this looks like in a stock form and then also up here is our stock clutch now I believe I have to replace this part of it but I'll find out here in a little bit and then also I can reuse my uh, flywheel but uh, and possibly go with a little larger diameter and such so we'll see what we can get there this piece will be reused um, as well because that new tranny go bolts right to it. But I am going to pull this out and clean it up. Let's get this out without dropping it on my toes.
Nine and a half. That's a whopper. Hmm. Okay, now that we have our cross member cut and our three speed transmission out, I would suggest going through and getting this nice and clean. So. Hey, there's fluid in it. So I have everything stripped off the tranny, with exception of a couple things like the bell housing, uh, but you'll see why. Um, at this point, I would suggest going through and getting this nice and clean. Now, in my case, well, I'm gonna use the Gladiator parts washer because I have it. Um, otherwise, what I would do is just use a standard uh, parts washer and you'll be wrestling it around in there and all that type of stuff, or you can take it and spray it with some engine, uh, you know, foaming engine cleaner, that type of thing, but you, you're gonna wanna clean some of the grime off of it. Uh, I'm not saying it has to be perfect, but probably some of it. And then of course, if you have a car wash that's friendly, well, maybe you could do that. But I'm not recommending that. So, I am going to get this into our parts washer, run it off, get as much of the guts and grime off of this as I can. Um, and then uh, we'll see where it's at from there. And then I'll get the shaft off and this bell housing out. So if we can get it to go into yeah, one of them. Here, Perfect. Because that will not tip over. Ready? And go. Right through the glass. <laughs> I need to make a modification to the tail shaft housing so I can accept a regular uh, mechanically driven speedometer. And uh, to do that, I know I have to remove the shifter housing because there's, I believe, a retainer in here for the shift rod that goes into the transmission. And uh, I have to get all that released so then this unit will come right off. Um, but we'll, we'll start on dressing it here with getting that out of the way. Now, probably one of the questions everybody just asked themselves is, what are you gonna do for a yoke? because I have to have a yoke that goes inside of here. This has this obnoxious big thing on the end of it. Um, I'm gonna let the drive shaft shop decide whether I need this or not, because I honestly don't know. Um, and uh, we'll go from there, but this is gonna be a common spline, so getting another yoke won't be an issue as far as the slip yoke is concerned. And you can see this is the remnants of what was left on the, uh, from the S10. So there's always the possibility that I can reuse this portion of the drive shaft um, if this is such that it's large enough to go to. Otherwise, I may have to use a conversion joint, but I'll know that one, once I get to that point relative to the drive shaft. Yeah. So that. If you're not understanding what I mean by a mechanically driven speedometer cable versus a electrical one, so this is the electric version and it has a tone ring on the inside and it just picks up pulses relative to the rotation speed, very similar to what an ABS sensor does in today's vehicles. Now, on the older um, cable driven, you actually have a gear such as this. This is actually out of the Chrysler transmission that we rebuilt here a couple weeks ago. But this would go inside of this hole and then on the shaft that's in there will have a mating gear and as the shaft spins it spins this part 
as it spins, it spins a literally a cable that runs directly to the back end of the speedometer, and that's what causes the movement of the needle. Um, on this, it's 100% electrical. This is 100% mechanical. All right, so what we're looking at here is, this is the shift um, rod. So the, the clutch forks and everything are on that rod inside of the case. And um, so what I'm looking at here is, I need to pull this chunk of metal out of here that actuates off the shifter. Otherwise the housing will not come off. Um, so it's just a matter of driving that pin down We can drain the water off. Okay, we got a lot of water in it. All right, so note to self, if you're gonna wash your transmission, you probably gotta plug a couple more holes than I did. Uh, oops. Well, putting this back on is gonna be fun to line all that up. magnesia there. Don't worry. Yes, I got water in it. It's not going to ruin the transmission. All I'm going to do is I'll take and rinse it out. So I was going to pull this top cover off anyway, inspect everything. That's just a good thing to do. This is a junkyard transmission. Make sure there aren't busted up teeth. Everything shifts fine. It doesn't seem like that's an issue, but uh, just in case and everything turns fine as well. So we'll take and we'll rinse this out. Just blow some stuff off, um, blow some parts cleaner through it, no big deal. Um, but anyhow, so here is the tail shaft off, and here's what I was referring to. So this, in a mechanical function, this would be a gear instead of a flat tooth or a commonly called a tone ring. Um, it basically creates pulses relative to the uh, magnetic pickup. So, so there's that. I will take the time and take and pull this off. I do need to still remove the bell housing. So I guess let's take and spin that around. Um, something to note are these couple pieces. So you have a detent ball and a spring. And of course this big rocker assembly and that um, pin is actually just driven down here. Now when I go back to reassemble this, I'll, have to, I'll drive the pin the rest of the way out and I'll have to drive, I'll drive the pin obviously from the top side because um, there's no way to push it up. So, but for right now, I'm just gonna set these off over here. Not gonna do it. Wow. Bad boys in there. How's a bad boys in there? through we tried to use this torx bit and heat that's not working well um, shortening up our extension at least as far as the number of joints are concerned that is working with some heat 
Now, if you're sitting there going, hey, this is a DIY, I don't have a, a oxyacetylene torch laying around. Well, that's fine, I understand that. And worst case is, take it to somebody who does. Otherwise, a propane torch will most likely get you there, or at least one with map gas uh, will get you plenty of heat into aluminum. Aluminum swells very quickly and absorbs that heat quickly. It's not like you're trying to get it red hot where it's a you know, three quarter inch piece of steel. Uh, you're just trying to warm it up enough just to expand it and break loose any corrosion and, and such that's in there. And, uh, and then it'll pop loose. So uh, for a few bucks at the hardware store, you can get enough to, uh, to break it loose as well. all good okay so now we have our cover off and uh, as I was hoping for and expecting quite honestly that the uh, this transmissions in excellent condition there does not seem to be any crazy wear on any of the gears um, the synchros all look good and uh, just gonna like I said douche it down here with a little bit of uh, brake clean just make sure there's no shrapnel in there and of course I did have all that water in there uh, which did not hurt anything by any stretch because it actually rinsed out some stuff um, as well. So, so hey, we're, uh, we're in good shape. I'm going to get this gasket surface all cleaned up, likewise over on the cover. We'll get the cover put back down on there. Then I'll get the tail shaft housing off to uh, be modified for our speedometer gear. And I believe I do have to take this piece off, but uh, that's easy enough. Look at that. Now to reassemble this, I'm going to take and put some sealer along this top edge here, and then this is just going to go down and over and on. Now something to keep in mind, the only differences in these bolts that are holding, on, holding it on are there's one stud, and then there's two that have this larger shoulder, and they're, they function as a locating dowel relative to the cover because you want to align everything for the shift forks to work correctly. So that's what these are all about. So you see we have our tail housing ready to send out and get modified to accept our speedometer setup. And it will be back next week, and that's where we'll pick back up on this project. Until then, you know what to do. Get in the shop, get your project done. And you know what? If you don't have a project, go buy one. Everybody said it's okay. See ya. <laughs>